Okay, hi there. Welcome to another uh, synoptic essay question. We're going to walk through a an Edexcel Paper 3 style question looking at the micro and macro consequences of a currency depreciation. Bit of background here, sterling against the US dollar. Uh, the pound was actually trading at over $2 to the pound in 2007 before the financial crisis. It then de de depreciated uh, tremendously to about 140, stabilised at about 160, but again fell after the Brexit referendum in 2016. Uh, and it's been, it's been trading at about 120, 130 over recent times, but quite, quite a long way down. It's trading about 15% lower than it was in 2015. And likewise, if you look at sterling against the euro, of course, the UK is now outside the single market. Uh, we have a free floating exchange rate, and this is the, the value of the pound against the 19 member nations of the European Union, Monetary Union. And again, the pound fell sharply in 2007, recovered ground, fell again in 2016. Uh, recently, it's been trading at about 115. Actually, it's been appreciating a little bit in the recent times, but obviously, the pound is lower than it was. Uh, you know, 10, well, even five, six years ago. So here's a, here's a classic question. I've, I've, I've ignored essentially the extracts. So I'm just going to look at the structure of the answer. Assess the micro and macro impacts of depreciation in the exchange rate of the UK or a country of your choice. So in this walkthrough, we're going to look at the UK, but of course you might be focusing on a different country. I think many of the same points, both analysis and evaluation, apply to this kind of question. Now, micro, as I've been saying in these videos, when you think about a synoptic paper, the micro effects, the micro influences, the micro consequences. Uh, it's easy to uh, think in simple terms about businesses, households and industries. So if you think about those three uh, businesses, so households, businesses, industries, HBI, then you really can't go wrong on the micro side. So what about a currency depreciation? Well, for households, if the currency falls, if the pound falls against the dollar, for example, then uh, the cost of the things that we import, priced in pounds, converting dollars to pounds, will go up. So we'll see an increase in the price of imported foods and energy products, imported gas, for example. Consumer durables, such as washing machines and uh, smartphones, will become more expensive. So that's going to cut real incomes, and obviously the has a direct effect on households in terms of their real purchasing power, both in terms of buying imports and also when they travel overseas. If you have savings, for example, higher prices reduces the real, the real interest rate effectively on savings. In that sense, depreciation of the currency acts a little, a little bit like a tax. For businesses, uh, importers, well, of course, their costs will go up if they import cement or fertilizer or software licenses. Uh, raw materials and components, that will increase their variable costs. And you could imagine the diagram that you could draw showing that the effect on price and profit. Um, uh, of course, the cost of importing capital equipment would also go up if you're buying in overseas technology. For exporters, however, uh, a fall in the nation's currency, including the pound, in theory makes exporters more price competitive. And here's the key, but I've put it in red because often people miss it out of the exam. Exports become more price competitive when priced in an overseas currency. So when a UK exporter, and Tutor Jew, for example, is selling study guides to the United States, when priced in dollars, the UK price stays the same, but dollar price goes down. And in theory, that should increase the returns, the profits from exporting. You might focus on individual industries, tourism, for example. Uh, a weaker currency, probably good for domestic travel and tourist businesses, more overseas tourists coming into the UK. Uh, relative returns on FDR might go up. If you're making, let's say, $10 million profit from an overseas subsidiary, when you convert that $10 million to pounds, you'll get more pounds uh, in exchange. So relative returns on FDI go up. Uh, however, there's also an increased risk of takeover since assets in the UK would appear relatively cheaper to potential overseas investors. Inequality kind of cuts across both micro and macro. I think it could be used as a micro, particularly when you talk about particular types of, of groups of households. So if, if food and energy prices go up because of a currency depreciation, that increases the risk of food and fuel poverty for lower income households. And if you're a saver, the higher cost of living can reduce the real return on savings. In terms of evaluation, while well, households uh, see their costs go up, 
uh, people on benefits may suffer, but of course welfare benefits and things like state pensions, they can be index linked, which helps to soften the blow. For businesses, their costs go up. Key question there is can they easily, quickly, cheaply substitute for domestic inputs? Can they find an alternative source of supply, which is perhaps a little bit cheaper compared to imports? That depends on that. Tourism benefits, yes, but there might be limits to the supply side capacity of tourist facilities. So there's only a limited number of flights, a limited number of hotel rooms, for example, uh, the capacity of tourist venues. Inequality, there is a risk of inequality from a depreciation. The poorest often face the highest increase in the living cost. They, they bear the brunt of a depreciation. Uh, but of course, you can essentially protect some groups. The triple lock on pensions would be a good example there. Students often find with this kind of question that the macro consequences of a currency depreciation are perhaps a little easier to uh, to talk about. So you just you go back to your macro objectives and focus on those. A depreciation typically increases inflation uh, because import prices have gone up. There might be some secondary effects if imported inflation prompts a, a kind of wage price um, response in the labour market. The central bank, of course, might respond by tightening monetary policy by increasing interest rates. So you could build a nice evalu analysis paragraph linking the depreciation to inflation. You might choose instead to link the depreciation to the trade balance. Initially, if you believe in the J-curve theory, a currency fall worsens the trade balance because of low elasticities of demand for imports and exports. But if the marginal learning condition holds, then eventually the trade balance may improve. Keep in mind, however, that the current account isn't just trading goods and services. It's the dollar, the sterling value of primary and secondary incomes. They might change if the exchange rate uh, goes down. Quite a nice analysis paragraph to build would be the, the link between a depreciation and growth. So again, um, there's a possible stimulus to growth from the export industries. We might well sell some more exports and there could be an export multiplier effect. So if you think about things like businesses like trade logistics and trade insurance and freight uh, freight businesses and uh, you know, businesses linked to airports and, and, um, and other international travel, there could be quite a significant export multiplier effect. Effectively, a fall in the currency is equivalent to a modest cut in interest rates, you know, that uh, it basically acts as a stimulus to the economy. The government might also be affected by a currency depreciation. Uh, if the currency is weak and volatile, that can cause the yield on new government debt to go up, since foreign investors might demand a risk premium if they're going to buy the debt. And if the government's building new motorways, building new hospitals and schools, for example, uh, renovating the sewage system or building new bridges. The import costs of the capital machinery used to do these projects and the import costs of the raw materials uh, would go up. So that could lift government spending. The impact on inflation depends in part on whether importers pass on the higher costs. And they don't necessarily have to do that. It depends in part on the elasticity of demand. Trade balance might worsen, but many other factors determine the value of trade flows in the current account, not just the exchange rate. Will a currency depreciation stimulate growth? Well, it depends on the stage of the economic cycle and it depends on the elasticity of aggregate supply. And keep in mind, of course, that if your technology becomes more expensive, then that might have an impact on investment and long on aggregate supply. And whilst inflation, sorry, de depreciation can increase the cost of government spending, uh, stronger growth and inflation can lift tax revenues. Uh, might be worth looking at my video on fiscal drag on that one. At some point in the answer, I think you'll be using a diagram. I, I was going to think about costs and revenues, but I'll just use ADAS. So in theory, a currency depreciation increases the price of imports, causing aggregate supply to shift to the left, as you see here. That drives uh, the price level up and real GDP down. But, of course... Uh, in theory, a fall in the currency stimulates exports. So AD1 might shift to AD2, effects on price and output. But also there could be an export multiplier effect. And I always try and encourage my students to add in an extra demand curve shift, AD2 to AD3 here, if you think there's a sizable multiplier effect, in which case aggregate demand might rise to AD3 and you get a stronger growth effect, but perhaps a bit more inflation. So evaluation perspectives, 
I think the impact of a depreciation on any any economy, on the key macro objectives, depends on the scale, in other words, how big is the change, the duration and the timing of a currency fall. So typically a currency fall during a recession uh, can act as a useful uh, absorber, shock absorber, and help limit the damage. Uh, the impact depends on whether exporters cut their prices in overseas markets. You see, if you're selling something for £20 and... Um, uh, converting to dollars, it, it converts to, let's say, $35. You might choose to keep your dollar price exactly the same if the pound falls, and that converts into more sterling, so you make a bigger profit margin on each unit, uh, each unit sold. Third point is hugely important. It's a great evaluation point. Many exports require imports. Car manufacturers selling overseas, will they import component parts such as glass and steel? Farmers selling their products overseas, will they import fertiliser and irrigation systems? So a fall in the exchange rate might be good for exports, but actually if your imports become more expensive, that might negate or constrain or limit the, the benefit you get. And also the impact on exports depends in part on where our leading trade partners are are and who they, how they're doing in terms of their own economic cycles. So if a fall in the pound, for example, if the European Union is, is slowing down, will limit the benefits to our exporters. Often we focus, well, we have focused in this video on the pound dollar and the pound euro. That's fine, but we trade in many countries. So instead of just looking at bilateral exchange rates, better to focus perhaps on the trade-weighted exchange rate, which is across all countries, which might indeed be more stable. And the last point, but an important one, uh, currency depreciations affect the price competitiveness, the relative prices of imports and exports. As I'm sure you know, non-price competitiveness, things like branding and design and quality of product and after-sales service, they can be often as or more important than the pure price that you're selling the product for. Key example point I would take out of this is that a currency depreciation leads to demand and supply side effects. So try to build this into an analysis diagram to help you reach the highest KAA levels. Well, there we go. That was a walkthrough of a, of a sort of synoptic style question on the impact of a currency depreciation. Huge thanks if you stayed all the way. Uh, never take that for granted. Stay happy, stay curious, stay positive, and hopefully see you again sometime soon.